Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this week's class of Crypto Mastery, and we're going to dive into some charts. Got a little ETH warning here. Uh, we'll talk about what happened yesterday and the fake news about the Bitcoin ETF. And we're going to talk about some top crypto movers, kind of take a look at some of these so you can apply the indicators. And um, I'm not going to use my camera today, but uh, probably next week we'll have it. And uh, let's dive into some news, shall we? So the uh, the big news yesterday, of course, was the uh, fake news about the ETF. So you guys probably already know about that. But uh, the uh, Bitcoin price hit 30,000 momentarily, uh, pushed up here on uh, the uh, fake news of the uh, spot ETF. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna, I forgot to turn on my, my ad blocker. I'm going to turn that back on. There is a cool ad blocker called Ad Blocker Plus. So uh, then if I reload this page... It uh, should make these ads go away. There you go. There you have it. Oh, but some of these sites, they, they don't let you read the article unless you uh, leave your ad blocker on. So uh, at any rate, uh, Bitcoin jumps traders to pay Bitcoin ETF approval. Uh, you know, maybe this isn't the best news source of this. Barron's is going to make us subscribe, et cetera. And, um, but the other, Bloomberg also is uh, famous for that. The Bitcoin ETF enthusiasts. You know, um, people piled in yesterday as that news hit, uh, quickly was ruled out as fake news and fueled $85 million in liquidations. Uh, isn't that why I said that in um, the M3 trader chat yesterday, that this was likely designed to trigger lots of liquidations and and essentially a, a short squeeze. And so uh, that's what happened. But um, what is also interesting, if we just pull up the charts there, is that we we can see that somebody made a, a bunch of money on this. Now, the news story was leaked or reported by uh, Cointelegraph. And so, you know, um, if you're the billionaire owner of Cointelegraph and uh, business is way down, which I'm hearing, then um, what better way to sort of make some money for payroll than to float a rumor that the spot ETF was approved and uh and and dump you know go leverage long on this and let this short squeeze play out because it went right up to 30,000 and then sold off. So somebody made a boatload of money in, about on that. A lot of the shorts got wiped out right in here and we have this labeled as our zone of uncertainty. Well, now we have some certainty. Now even though it pushed up and it sold off, we are we are now breaking out of the uh, the ascending wedge here. So we have this wedge pattern forming. And if you guys, if you guys don't have that, it is in the Crypto Mastery membership area. If you're not already a Crypto Mastery member, uh, then you can uh, find out more at CryptoMastery.org and sign up, find out more about where to get these indicators and the access to the membership area. So uh, these indicators are our secret weapon in all of our trading here at Moonstream. And uh, you can read more about it at CryptoMastery.org. And uh, and so what I wanted to talk about here is uh, and pull up the um, the what is it called the uh, high probability chart patterns. And again, you have access to this inside of the uh, membership area with Crypto Mastery here. So and while I pull that up here, I'll just show you what those look like. Maybe I can find the one I'm looking for here. All right, we need to add it to that page. <clears throat> so. Yeah, continuation patterns. We have bilateral patterns, and I'll just open up all of them here. So that'll pull up here in a minute. So that uh, you guys can recognize that what we're looking at here in this uh, wedge, what I'll do for now is draw it this way. Okay. So uh, this zone here, which we have labeled zone of uncertainty, is now creating some certainty by breaking up above it. All right. Uh, can you guys let me know that you can see... I'm moving this screen over. Let me know if you can see this. So we have reversal patterns. We have continuation patterns. We have uh, bilateral patterns. And the one that uh, there's there's obviously more than this. These are the most common ones. Um, continue standing. All right. So I guess we don't have it on. But it's, it's more of. Yeah. So, I mean, it's calling a descending triangle. Let me just do this. It can go either way, though. These are bilateral patterns. So even though it's called a descending triangle, now that we've broken out to the upside of this, it becomes a bullish signal. So I'm going to do this, copy it over. 
onto the chart here. And what we can see, which is cool is if you're using something like Snagit, by the way, uh, you can just overlay that. And then when you touch the chart, it's going to sort of show us exactly what's going on. You see that? So if I go back to the chart, we can see, I'd have to zoom out on it, but you guys get the idea. Uh, kind of make this thing fit a little bit better. And but but you see what happened there. So we had that nice pattern forming and descending triangle, but it's broken up to the higher side. Now, you know, I had it drawn uh, slightly differently. Let's see. Uh, I extend it out. So either way, I mean, it could be drawn either way. So you see this triangle here. They have it sort of drawn like this, in which case it had broken out a while ago. And uh, and that's fair, too. These things are not always exact. But if you go by the highs of the candlesticks there, you know, it did break above. It's getting above the 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages. So I was saying I've been saying for a while I just needed a catalyst. So even though it was a fake catalyst, uh, you know, the, the prices are holding up above this ascending triangle here. So we were OK. Ostensibly, we're OK. And as of now, I'm now bullish. So this is a kind of monumental step. And um in the scheme of things, we'll certainly keep an eye on it, but because uh, it could be, it could certainly be a fake out, and the markets are known for that, especially in these types of markets. But now this right here, I would be looking for some kind of a pullback and retest of this upper trend line, which was resistance to kind of come down and then bounce off of it. So you know we could see something like this, and instead of you know let's let me zoom out a bit, and we'll we'll drag that blue line over. Since we now know, you're a little dot there. This thing, since we now know that this is we're above this, now it could come back down again. So, you know, let me just clone it instead because uh, we still could have that happen. I think this uh, arrow is no longer valid at this stage. So, if we clone this and we do this kind of thing, if it pulls back, we could see this kind of a pattern because again, we've broken out of this zone of uncertainty right up in here. So, that's good. So, overall, that's bullish. Let's go over to Crypto Panic, just kind of see a good uh, news aggregator here, see what's happening. You know, the big news was yesterday. Uh, let's see Bitcoin price. Here's why 28K is critical. I will look at that and make our own a judgment there. Let's see. Binance US no longer to, I mean, we've known this was coming for a while, can no longer make USD withdrawals. That's quite a shame, though. I really liked using Binance US, especially in the 2021 bull run. They were the fastest to uh, be able to withdraw uh, Bitcoin and USDT when I was sending it over to Bybit for doing some fast trades. Uh, they were pretty quick about that. Uh, but Gemini is pretty quick too. G Gemini I like. So, you know, we miss Binance, but uh, we've got Uniswap and Gemini to take the place. So um, <clears throat> let's see some reports of Hamas using crypto. Uh, I'm not going to get into all that mess, but, um, you know, it's uh, there are pro and, and con use cases of having a permissionless, uh, you know, and uh, mostly, um, what's the right word? Hidden money, money uh, currency. <laughs> There's a better word for that, I'm sure. But uh, uh, it's escaping me at the moment. I'm trying to read and speak and use my brain at the same time. Pepe, Bitcoin Magazine owner, backs first ordinal funds. There's really not much happening here. We're just kind of digesting what happened yesterday. And uh, let's see, Bitcoin, Trezor, E-Force, there's nothing here. So, well, we will, you know, you know what I always say, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. Uh, we could also hop over here to the Bitcoin chart. They've got pretty good news here and um, uh, mostly the same. And Bitcoin price models hint at 130K after the halving. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 I, my targets are 105, 105,000. 150,000 and 210,000. And those are just basically Fibonacci projections, uh, but uh, we don't know. And this is interesting. Analyst points out weird Bitcoin activity on Bybit and Deribit. I mean, th these are highly manipulated markets, uh, by the way. Uh, I've experienced that. So be very careful. Uh, at least, you know, US, we can't really trade on these. I think that's a good thing. Um, highly, uh, you know, this is dangerous stuff and um, make market makers and big traders definitely maneuvering and manipulating price. There's an A book and a B book, and not everyone realizes that. So uh, the bigger whales and institutions play by different rules. So just know that if you're considering margin uh, margin trading. Let's see, Bitcoin takers sell ratio. Okay, that uh, the taker, there's a maker and a taker. That means that the uh, takers were hitting the ask or the bid. They were 
not putting it out there. They were just hitting market order, basically. Let's see. <clears throat> Pardon me. Surprise rally. Uh, indicators. Let uh, change when the volume at this point greater than one means the take or buy volume is more than the sell volume currently. Well, that's obvious, but that's what pushes prices up. Such a trend suggests that the investors are willing to pay more to purchase the asset and thus a bullish sentiment shared by the majority. Uh, that is must be written by a lawyer. A very uh, wordy uh, sentence there. And um, I, I mean, this is simply supply and demand. On the other hand, the value under the threshold, probably <laughs> wordy. Yeah, this must have been, maybe they wrote it with chat GPT, which uh, definitely likes to be over a little verbose, a bearish mentality under the threshold. Okay, well, this is um, not really worth unpacking here. I'm just skimming it. Uh, well, here, in the case of Bybit, 24 SMA, the ratio hit peaks to trend, both extremely high levels, showing buying pressure, obviously. Uh, comparison indicator only hit 1.8 on Binance, 6.3 on OK, OKX. Um, you know, again, lots of buyers aping in thinking the BlackRock and the, the first spot ETF, it wasn't the BlackRock, but basically thinking the first ETF had been approved. So what's important here? Um, yeah, I mean, basically what I said has enjoyed some upward momentum during the last couple of days, regardless of the quick rally crash. OK, well, we can see that in the charts and now, now climbed to, to 28.5. So, again, what is important and all that's important is we've broken out of this wedge pattern and is holding. It did not immediately retrace. So this is bullish. OK, and the reason it's still bullish is that people realize, OK, this is what can happen and what will happen when, not if, but when a spot ETF is approved. So keep that in mind. And, and I'm not the only one talking about that, obviously, but the handwriting is on the wall. Why you, it's a good time to have a non-zero amount of Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin will really lead that rally when that happens. So I'd be careful loading up on alts just yet. We want to make sure that we are continuing higher. If Bitcoin were to retrace and go lower in break below here, uh, just know that the alts uh, alts are going to get hit pretty hard. The Bitcoin dominance, which we'll talk a little bit about and more in tomorrow's class, the M3 Active Trader class, which you can find out more about at moonstream.io. Uh, dot slash M3. That's a little bit. M3 Active Trader. Uh, but if you'd like to find out more, that's at moonstream.io slash M3. We have daily chat and uh, more in-depth classes on Wednesdays, and you can find out more, including getting these indicators included uh, right here. Okay, so let's see. Um, on this, uh, what were, were we at? Essentially, what I was saying is that um, if there were to be a breakdown below here, you know, we are still potentially... Regardless of this ascending wedge, by the way, I've had this right shoulder on here for weeks now. Those of you who are here know that. Are we out of the woods with a head and shoulders breakdown? We're not. We It's it's not often we have these conflict, uh, conflicting signals here. And that's why it is uh, tricky. So on the one hand, right, uh, let me get rid of all this uh, black drawings and nonsense there, uh, those lines. Okay. So on the one hand, we're in a nice upward trending trend channel. OK, and this still now this is intact if we draw that up. So that's bullish. We also have a macro cup and handle, which is what I think I was drawing there with all those scribbles here. We got the cup and the handle. So if we break I didn't draw that very well, but if we break above this 32K, I've been saying for a while, that's the handle top. That's very bullish. And then we will then we're going higher break up close above 32K. We're on our way to 50. And uh, you guys know the why I project that in uh, the M3 class. We talk about that tomorrow. But the bearish, now let's make the bearish case. And um, let me just see if we can clean this up a little bit because I know it's a lot to look at here. And all we have to do, fortunately, is go over to the object tree. By the way, they moved it, by the way, in the menu. If you're looking for the object tree, it's now here used to be all the way down at the bottom. I don't know why that was, but we can pull it up this way too. And essentially, if I create a, a folder, and uh, let me just do that line there, we'll create a folder called the uh, bullish scenario. And, uh, you know, I do, do recommend uh, playing around with this and 
getting used to it. Because when things start moving fast, you're going to want to be able to turn these on and off. Uh, and so we can go ahead and turn off that part. I've got the, uh, so we've got the parallel channel here. Where is the parallel channel? It's right in there. So kind of put that up into the bullish scenario. And uh, that way we can, all right, now we're also going to take these two that uh, would be here. And then the other one there. Okay. So basically we've got the bullish scenario. Now we can erase that. All right. So now what we're going to do is look at the uh, bearish scenario. Okay. So the bearish scenario is this head and shoulders. Okay. Uh, so go like this. There. And, um, so we've got that one, it's going to be this one, and then this one here, wherever that is. So it's a little tedious. But once you have these drawn, then you can really gain a lot of control over your charts, a lot more control over your charts. Okay, so basically we have the bear, a bearish scenario here. Just turn off that head and shoulders. This is part of that head and shoulders too. So why do we say that? Okay, boom. Okay, so this now becomes the, the uh, measured move from the head and shoulders breakdown. Okay, so basically, if we turn off both of them, we see we had that that wedge pattern, right? So we weren't sure which way it was going to go. And I'll just draw that back over there. Break above, bullish, target becomes up here. Uh, don't, I mean, the numbers just happen to align. 32K is my number. And uh, it breaks below, where's the target there? Well, the target on the downside is really going to, I'll be looking at the uh, bearish scenario, that uh, head and shoulders. So how do you draw these? Well, if this is the left shoulder, you know, whether it's, doesn't have to be exact. And if this is the the head, now this is really tricky because it's it was almost a double top. Usually the head has to be a bit higher. It's barely higher, but it's still technically a head, a small one. And I had drawn this scenario. Again, we want to be like Wayne Gretzky. Where is the market going? Where is the puck going to be? So I drew this weeks ago, the possibility of this shoulder. So we came right up here and tagged the top of this line. And it doesn't matter what number it is. It's just sort of in this zone of the right shoulder. So if we bounce around up in this and start putting in lower highs, watch out. Okay, because the problem then, because we come back down below in this zone, then it invalidates that wedge. And if it breaks this line at 25,300, which we've been talking about for some time now, then the measured move from the head to the neckline had that drawn a little bit overboard there. That if this is that measured move, it's not exact, but typically it's pretty close. Okay, so that would take us down to guess what? Right around that CME gap, guys. I see this thing setting up here, and this would could be a classic fake out because you know we have these two equal scenarios to be aware of, and the best thing to do really is to wait and see. Uh, you know, we've talked about that twenty five thousand three hundred level. Strong resistance here, resistance flipped as support, support. And we've been watching that level. This is the key level. And there on other charts, I do have an alert set on that. And you should as well. If you don't already, go ahead and set that now. Uh, crossing down 25.3. Okay. And now either, you know, sell can mean uh, many things. It's just, you know, beware, uh, you know, sell half. You don't have to sell everything, but it means markets are going down. Now that's on the closing basis. And uh, in all fairness, we did dip below it here around 25,100. So, you know, your line in the sand could be sort of 25,000, you know, just below 25,000. Those round numbers are important. And so I'm going to set another alert here just to be be safe. 25,000, uh, 24, 9, even 24, 9, 40. I don't know. I was going to do 50, but uh, just that would be indicative of, the you know we're we're really breaking that 25k level and uh so basically you know and, and really i think bring it down a little bit below these wicks do you see that because these wicks held and down below this is held so if we're going below 24 i drag that lower so it's going to be a different number here 24 825 okay so when you drag it it doesn't update the uh, message so 24 825 we'll just call it that and yeah, 
So, you know, get really familiar with drawing your alerts, you guys. These are really going to help you. So that would be the bearish scenario. So this is going lower and quite a bit lower. So how much lower could we go if we break down below that neckline? You know, we could see a 20% drop in Bitcoin. Wouldn't that, that would freak everybody out. Then you'd have everyone coming out of the woodwork saying, we're going to zero, we're going to 10K, we're going down, wait, but this this is where I would be looking to have your limit buy orders in. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Again, there's a CME gap. We look at that tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class, but uh, there's also strong support over here on this dip back from uh, March of this year. So, uh, you know, I would, back in here, I would look for some uh, strong support in that zone. So it's also, again, that uh, CME gap area. So not to be a, be a dead horse here, but this is where you should keep some powder dry and start dollar cost averaging. Because I think if we hit that, we'll have we'll bounce. We'll certainly bounce from there. Now, is that the bottom? I mean, I, I still firmly believe the bottom is in. And, you know, there's... You know, we had we have other arguments here with like maybe it, it could come down to this level. We have that trend line. So we just have to wait till things invalidate or validate. So at the end of the day, <clears throat> dollar cost averaging makes sense uh, if we go lower. So, I mean, right now I wouldn't be buying anything. I'd be waiting and watching. And so we have those two bullish and uh, the bullish and bearish scenarios. Okay. So let's just uh, clean that up a bit. We've got the bullish. That's the bearish. And so in terms of this, I'm going to drag this uh, into the bearish scenario. These are a little tricky, by the way. When you're drawing these and you're new to the object tree, you can't create a folder first. You have to click on the indicator first. So if I click on this text box, then I could create a new folder, create a group of drawings, or drag it into another one. You just drag it into the other folder like that. And now there's that text. So you can turn it off individually inside of the folder. I like to use the whole folder. So right now, all we have is a still a zone of uncertainty. You know, we need to see if this holds or not. But, you know, this is why it's important to know what you're looking at. Now, we haven't gone to our indicators yet. Let's just look at our indicators and see if that tells us anything. So on the daily basis on the, uh, let's see, ERI is turned off. I'll turn the ERI on. So we do have an early reversal indicator yesterday. And that is uh, is by itself interesting. I like week on the weekly basis to me, it's more interesting. We did have a weekly. Here's what looks good, though. And I'm sorry to jump around so much, but we, I want to cover this part. So we have a, on the weekly basis, we have the early reversal indicator here. The trend strength indicator broke above 20. This was the first signal. This was going higher. And then it broke above 20 around here. So we, I do, based on just our indicators, I think we are going higher here, at least in the near term. Now it can get a little tricky in terms of these topping out. And, um, you know, there is some value in drawing lines like this. So I still think we have more upside, at least in the short term. Okay. And then the other thing we're going to look at uh, is the, so the TSI. And then I'll open up the signal line. Now, this is the weekly basis. And on the daily basis, um, <clears throat> we're, what we're looking at here is also an ERI a couple of days ago. So, so isn't that interesting, though? Let me turn off some of the other ones. This should be there. I'll hide it. I'll turn off the stochastics RSI. And for now, we'll just look at the early reversal indicator. Okay. But isn't that interesting? The ERI triggered before yesterday's big push higher. Could it be that somebody knew something here? Again, the ERI, just so you know, and if you're new at this, is designed um, basically to follow the footsteps of elephants. So this arrow triggered specifically three days ago because we saw the the oscillator down here come off the zero line on the 12th and back above the 20 line in three time periods. That's the criteria. Now, I can't tell you the math behind it. This is a unique pattern. Nobody else has this. This is uh, is, is our one of our secret weapons, the early reversal indicator. And um, our quant engineer uh, created this based on some patterns I was seeing and layering in a Keltner band and some other stuff. Okay. So, but what you see here, the blue line is blue middle line is the middle line is blue. And then it pushes back above this 20% line standard oscillator behavior. But what it really means in psychology is, Hey, this thing bottomed out, started to come up 
and then had a massive surge of buying to push it up. Look at the slope on that. That's what triggered this. Similarly, the bearish ERI is when we come up to above 97, the top 3% and then down below 80% in three time periods. This was one time period. Then that's the bearish side of things. Okay. So just to make that, uh, uh, that determination. I'm looking for a case where that didn't happen. But, um, you know, for example, over here, it went down to this level and back up, but it wasn't deep enough to be a follow through. So if we open that up, that was way long ago. And um, that didn't uh, did not follow through. So that that that's the bottom line on that. And then when it confirms with this trend strength indicator, hence the name, the strength of the trend reversal coming back above this 20 line, then we have a high degree of follow through. So we had that three days ago. So there, and we had yesterday, uh, the big day pushing up once it got above 20. So it's not coincidental. We're following the footsteps of the elephants and the whales in this case. So now we are getting a bit overbought on this TSI. So if we want to be with, be like Wayne Gretzky again, we want to keep that in mind and kind of wait for a pullback. The ideal entries are on the way up, obviously. So... But the other thing I wanted to show you and the other case that let's take a look at our other secret weapon, which is an off the shelf indicator. And that's the Bollinger Band, the modified Bollinger Band. If you had been in Bitcoin yesterday, uh, how would you have known to sell out up at these high levels? Anytime it gets above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, it always reverts. I don't know anyone else is talking about this, but I, the standard Bollinger Band does not measure enough volatility. I used to measure it by a percentage basis when it got above it. And then I just said, let me just try a third standard deviation. And that always works. I, you know, 98% of the time here, it went above, pulled back down. All, when these, all three of these touching and then they pulled back down, it'll either go sideways and regroup or it'll pull back in. So yesterday, when this thing pushed all the way up to 30,000, A, it's a big round number. And B, look at it getting above the Bollinger Band considerably. These always pull back. Uh, you should always take profits, not financial advice, but uh, this is something that we talk about. People ask me, when should I take profits? Anytime the price is above the Bollinger Band on a daily basis or a weekly basis, sell, you know, at least sell half and wait for a pullback. Uh, those are my my rules for what I do. Uh, you make your own, do your own research, make your own decisions, but Anyway, this is the crypto mastery class and how we how we trade these markets. So if you like that and you're watching the YouTube channel, by the way, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow the community here. And um, I think we're giving some really good alpha on how to trade these markets. And so let's see um, what else do we want to look at. And I do have some chat questions. So let's go to the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sam says, in your experience, how often do I got a lot of questions in here? All right. Let me start at the top. You guys. So I didn't have that up. Let's see. We said, yes, we can see it. Uh, Miriam says, I purchased the system. Of course, lost the link to access, emailed your team, but never heard back. Uh, Miriam, sorry for that. We um, have a new support desk. And so uh, Myrene, who's on the on the admin, and you heard at the beginning of the class, uh, if you could uh, reach out to her. And Myrene, if you could reach out to Miriam, should be in our system. And uh, hopefully can take care of that. It uh, looks like Myrene already replied. Oh, she did. Okay. So because this is a, yeah, thanks, Myrene. Excellent. And uh, great. We're, we're on top of it. I see that now. And let's see. Great. We will, you're in the right place and um, certainly uh, here to support you. So back to Sam. In your experience, how often do the CME gaps fill? Yeah, it's a good question, Sam. You know, I, I would say 80 to 90% of the time. And tell you what. Because you're because it's you, Sam. We're gonna we'll go dive into it. Sounds good. How's that? So let's. Uh, usually we don't look at this in this class, but let's just jump over to the CME gap. We do a lot more of this in the uh, M3 class tomorrow, and let's just take a look at this. So the CME gaps here. What does that mean? Well, in terms of what does it actually mean, why does it happen? I don't know that it makes sense to go into that. CME stands for Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and uh, they handle derivatives, and so. The reason there are gaps is typically on a Friday or after hours, uh, the markets are closed on the CME. So whereas Bitcoin always open, the uh, the CME, if it opens, if it gaps up or gaps down, same thing with stocks, usually they fill, but tr particularly with Bitcoin. And, and that basically there's an imbalance from the closing to the opening. Now, 
I have my own theories about it. I haven't heard it definitively defined, but essentially the CME, they, they don't really take losses. They can carry it on the books forever, basically, uh, with derivatives. And so, you know, if they revisit certain levels, I think it has to do with some fancy accounting, to be honest. But, uh, you know, there were pressures because they also control overflow and and can dictate, uh, and, you know, and they're bigger money players that are also don't want to take losses. They can help maneuver at prices uh, at certain times to erase those losses. That's my theory on it. But at any rate, let's just take a look at this. So uh, we have, let's see, how do I want to mark this so that it's clear? I could do just, let's see, um, I'll just hand draw it. So back here, we had a gap, came back down, filled the gap there. Right back here, we had a gap, came back down and filled the gap there. So they kind of retest these levels. And uh, I want to also, yeah, so we'll, we're going to continue down with that on until we get to another unfilled gap. But I'm just showing you how many of these are filled. And so right in here, let's see, I want to go to my, if I do that, I might not be able to zoom it, but there's a small gap there that immediately filled. And then there's a gap here that we filled over here. So you see price came back down right in this level and filled this gap after the crash. So people who are watching these levels knew that, uh, hey, these CME gaps are going to be lower. And then here what happened, we had this big wick down there, which filled that CME gap, right? All right. So it, it's it's kind of unclear as one caused the other, but it's still worth keeping an eye on. And then up here, we had a gap down, came up and filled it before going lower. We had a gap here, filled it here. We had a gap here filled it there see it's when you once you see it you can't unsee it and so we just see number of these gap here filled there gap there has not filled that's a, a gap to the upside so that is yet to be filled above 33k i it will eventually gap down here filled it there okay so you see a number of these cases here right if i zoom out on this we had a small gap here filled it right away and now there is so so it's 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 we're batting you see i have this drawn here we had this gap here came down and filled it and then continued higher so it's it's almost always sam gap here filled it here so it's a, it becomes a magnet the cme gap is a magnet for price uh we can argue why and what that but it doesn't really matter now what i will point out though so out of these 20 or so they all they all filled now before now okay how do I want to say this? Before we put in a bottom here, which I believe we have, I believe the bottom is in, um, but uh, there is still a CME gap unfilled. We're at 98.75 all the way down. Where is that going to be? Well, this one, this one here, which I already pointed out. So if we zoom out on that, let's do that because that unfilled gap, I was saying we could go to 10,000 guys. That was last year. I was saying when we didn't really know how low we'd go, although I did forecast 16.5. A lot of people laughed at me and, and uh, then we hit it. So this gap filled right here. Let's see. Uh, let me make sure that I'm right because I know there's one at 98.75 and this one. Okay, so this one did not fill. When you zoom in on it, this is the one I knew. Oops, yikes. What happened here? Sorry, guys. Uh, so we're going to come all the way back here. I won't spend too much time on it. But to answer your question, I'd say 98% of these things fill. And and that doesn't mean, I mean, technically, we still could go down here. So right here, 98, 94 is the top of that gap. 98, sort of call it 97.30 is this small gap there. So I'm going to put a small circle. Now, it's a small gap, though. Does that mean that the power that it has the power to come all the way down? It tried to fill and it kind of filled a little bit of it there. So, you know, this one, does this mean that the prices are going to go back down below? At this point, I don't think so. But if you remember an M3 active trader, I was saying, hey, you guys, uh, before we knew the bottom was in, put put some buy limit orders in at 98.75, even if it's a little bit of money, because if you get filled, you'll have bragging rights at the country club for uh, the rest of your life. But uh, out of all of these, out of all of the gaps since then, they've all filled. Interesting, yeah? So, um, you know, something to add to your arsenal. So anyway, hope that uh, helps. Uh, let's go back to our regularly scheduled programming and see what else we have here. So 
Uh, let's see. All right, Sam, you're welcome. Uh, David says, do you always let keep the alert expiration in one month, 30 days? Um, thanks for pointing that out, David. Uh, no, usually I leave it open ended. Uh, now, there's there's two reasons for doing that or not doing that. And um, let me uh, back that out. The default is going to be the alert is only for the next 30 days. So it's going to give you a default expiration. Uh, so typically, yeah, I mean, typically on these we are doing alerts on uh, near term price action, especially when we're, you know, swing trading, which is what we do mostly in M3. Now, uh, what I would suggest for two reasons, another reason to leave these on is if you leave them forever, you're going to run out of alerts. And depending on what subscription level that you have, the, uh, uh, let's see. Just, okay, okay. I'm just checking the chat. Uh, you'll run out of alerts. You're only allowed so many. And the, the reason I have the premium is I get two thousand alerts, and I still run out sometimes. And uh, part of the reason that was is I had alerts uh, set open ended on coins I had lost interest in, etc. So use these selectively. I would recommend being aware of the expiration. So thanks for pointing that out. And uh, the so if you think this might take longer to play out, for example, let's just move it out a month, okay, and go to December. Now that lets it limits you to two months, it looks like. Uh, and then, but there's also now. Wait a minute. Usually, there's an open ended version. And um, I wonder if they've changed something here. Add alert only once. Yeah, you can do it as every time. Yeah, but no, that's uh. Well, they only give you two months. I can't, I don't know if that's new or not. I know I had some, I think they've changed that default maybe to save some server space because uh, that was used to be open-ended. I've had, I'd had alerts coming on much later, but anyway, it, it's, it pays to reevaluate at least monthly everything. So 30 days, 60 days here nor there. Um, and uh, I think that's all we need to talk about there. So, uh, right, the price is at the top of the Bollinger Band, two deviations right now. Okay, well, yeah, David, I don't recommend using the second standard deviation Bollinger Band. We can still look at it and compare. So if I add in another uh, Bollinger Band, and there. Yeah, I, I mean, it it does have some use, David, but... um. I don't, uh, you know, like to complicate the charts so much. And and by the way, if if you are using that, you can turn off the, the midline because if most of us were using a twenty one day EMA anyway, which is pretty much what that midline is. So turn that off. But um, you know, they have some value. You can see a similar pattern. It's just that on the big moves, the the standard, uh, the standard uh, Bollinger Band doesn't ca capture it. It doesn't can't handle the volatility. So if we want to just change the um, the colors on these to make it clearer, which is which, we'll just do that real quick. So we've got green and I'll thicken that line up a little bit. And then we've got our blue or our modified Bollinger Band. And this is usually something we talk about only in our, our other classes, but uh, you get a freebie today, everybody. Um, actually, we, I'm here to help everybody, so it's no big deal. Um, upper and lower, so I'll just make that uh, thicker on that. And then let me just reiterate what I meant by how to modify that. So to do that, you just come into the settings, change that to three. All right, so you just see the difference here. And um, so coming back, we saw the, the saw this big push higher up on, got above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, pulled back and kind of went sideways. So at the very least, it means... Price is going to be contained here and probably kind of go sideways a little bit. Here it popped above the line and then went down lower. And one thing my friend Steve Neeson taught me, who's the uh, not the inventor of candlesticks, uh, he did not only write the book, he wrote like all of the books in the early days. Uh, Steve used to speak at my seminars uh, when I used to host the Investor Super Conference down in Orlando, Florida. And uh, many names came out of that, by the way. If you ever heard of Tim Sykes, uh, I discovered Tim Sykes and um, brought him, uh, found, found my, we were running the seminar and had my office manager uh, go find a uh, celebrity. And this guy had a um, reality show. So we had Tim out there and he's now very successful. And uh, we had Tom Sosnoff speak and sponsor and a number of people you might have heard of, like Jake, Jake Bernstein, 
uh, so a couple of David Elliott's deceased, but uh, he was a great trader and um, yeah, a number of other people. I miss doing those. But at any rate, um, what we were talking about is uh, what Steve said is that normally when it breaks one of the bands, it'll go down to the opposite. So keep that in mind also. So it broke up above here, came down, hit the lower bands, and then gradually, gradually pushed up to the high of the bands. So we're kind of due for a pullback to the lower Bollinger bands. So there's that, but we really can't gauge that. It's just, um, you know, you want to kind of go with the trend. The point of this is the standard Bollinger bands can, can be a good indicator right here, sort of contain price under normal conditions having both of them on isn't a bad idea if your eyeballs can stand it but uh, you do risk the mm, you know running into overwhelm so anyway um okay great miriam thanks uh susie says thanks for the explanation on the cme gap very good thank you um yeah there there should be a toggle for open-ended susie yeah that's what i was looking for but i didn't see it did i miss it they did tweak the ui a little bit recently expiration oh there it is yeah here it is open-ended is never ending I, i'm i that's that's definitely different it used to be right below it so basically that makes sense too that that makes that's a great ui design because that way newbies uh nothing wrong with that but that way newbies don't churn up all of their alerts uh having it open-ended you know, and they'll expire and that's better for server space for trading view. But if you're more advanced, more ex have more expertise. So for example, here's where I'll use open-ended as this, uh, I have an alert at 32,000 on another chart. I want to know when we break above 32,000 and I'm going to leave that open-ended because that's my, that's when I start really going all in. Okay, and let's just say 32,050. So that way it doesn't reject like we did at 30,000. Now, in this case, all expiration open-ended, okay, set unexpired. And then again, down here, always recommend naming the alerts and the alert message. And that way, you know, you've done your analysis on that and what to what that means. Because, you know, when the markets really move, you're going to have five, 10 alerts go off. And most people just are in a panic and they click all of them off to find out what's going on and then... Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to go back and start with those because you've already done your analysis on them. But you see how we went right up to 30,000 to the nose, people, uh, everybody. So and then it pulled back. These big round numbers are, are known to pull back. So here was our clue above the uh, upper Bollinger Band. Huge clue. Of course, I mean, uh, here's the thing, though, and I do have to take a pause. News like that. You know, all bats are off for a little while. If BlackRock, when BlackRock gets approved, we're going to see a massive candle or multiple days of candles. It's just going to be going vertical. Now, I would still and always recommend taking some profits this far above the Bollinger Band for this type of pullback. But now what this says to us is we're still within the standard Bollinger Band uh, and momentum and direction is still higher. So, and our TSI is telling that also, our ERI and our TSI. So, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I do want to say this, this is looking more bullish than bearish. These are our two best signals, the ERI and the TSI. And so if we want to use our trade checklist, again, if you'd like to get our trade checklist for free, you can go to moonstream.io here, which is what we do, and scroll down here, some of our services that we offer, including the Future of Crypto Summit. Make sure you sign up for the Future of Crypto Summit coming out, launching in about 10 days here. And it's free, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, for the Trader Success Checklist, you just click on this, and you can also get some other free reports that we wrote here on the five biggest mistakes crypto investors make. This report, Past and Future for Bitcoin, originally entitled Blood in the Streets, released that a year ago, December of 2022, saying now is the time to buy and get in. People thought I was crazy, and then Bitcoin went up 100%. So uh, there's some good resources here. The Trader Success Checklist, as you can see, you can just opt in for that. And uh, then um, we you can use that. Let me see my... Uh, for some reason, my uh, one tab didn't pull that uh, up here for me today. I'm going to open this up so we can go through it together. All right. So here we have 
the ERI or the success, trader success checklist is the ERI green and showing higher. Yes, it is, right? So we'll jump back over to our chart and then we'll get into some hot movers, right? So what we're looking at is trying to give a rating on this. I'll open that up here. So we have our ERI. I'm going to turn off the Bollinger Bands just for a minute, you guys. There and there. All right, so we have the early reversal indicator three days ago. Check. The TSI, this green line, when it goes from red to green and above 20 line, okay, also check. Boom. And also very important is that is the line green. This midline here it has to be midline. Uh, let's see. Uh, what am I doing? No, I'm, I'm talking about the wrong one here. As the signal line turned from red to green. This is the third one of the four horsemen. So the signal line is going to be down here let's see i guess on this chart i didn't have it added and i'm uh, not sure why i have the stochastics R rsi on that so let's just fix that we'll go in here all you have to do is go to your invite only scripts uh, once you sign up and now i have a bunch of these so i uh, ignore the other ones there's some experimental ones a lot of those we don't use um, by the way you guys have the best ones we have the other ones we don't use we don't use for a reason uh, these are the best. And once we determine uh, new versions, we roll them out. Signal line going green. So we have check three of the, you know, that we used to call that the three kings. So we got three out of three so far. That's a good score. Worth taking that trade most times. And then, of course, we have the uh, trend indicator, which I'll add to this also. And at this point, it's in my favorites. So it's going to be easier to find. And uh, the trend indicator. So I'm going to turn off that. That's the wrong one. And here. So then we have this down here. So we're getting a key and a bell, you guys. Okay. Well, I missed that. That's why we're here. The key and the bell. So now we're looking pretty good, everybody. Signal line. Turn from red to green. Check. That was this midline here. That's a good sign. And we now call these four the four kings. Just made that up but uh this is our this is an excellent indicator really showing the start of a new trend so the green midline is important the key says hey there might be a new trend usually this is the first one of these arrows is the best it doesn't trigger all the time it says it's coming out after a downtrend that says the key says hey watch out we might have a new trend forming and the bell is a buy so guys we have a buy signal forming on today's chart as the bell we want to make sure it's still there at the end of the trading day uh, and so uh, we have that we have does the trend indicator have a green midline it does it's rare that we see a key and a bell with the red line the line still red but it does happen so you want to see both of those so if we go all the way back in here you know, we had the key in the bell, but then the red, the midline went red and this invalidated that. Uh, so anyway, this is looking good though. And if you're new here, this is kind of like you expect Mario from Mario Brothers to come running out, grabbing all the coins. We try to keep it fun. This is a, uh, this is a lot of quant math and <clears throat> modeled after some other successful uh, trading patterns. But so you can see the number patterns here. So once you're in the trade with the key in the bell, you want to follow the numbers. The dollar sign is a take profits signal and the bag of money is where you would take the rest of your profits. So we've been in a sideways market. So these haven't really been uh, as effective as in a new trending higher market. When we start seeing that, which we saw back in the bull run, we see lots of opportunities. So with trend reversal key and a bell came up here made money on that this is where you take profits it dropped key and a bell got in go up here just came in about even so you know really need to when we're in an upward trending market this is uh this is powerful uh and so it works on a weekly basis uh as well not enough data in this chart we'll look at that but anyway so let's go back to our checklist so we have a key and a bell and so that's the four horsemen and then uh, any other patterns that are in here. So do we have, and the higher the score, the higher the probability of successful trade. Is there a bullish engulfing candle? No, there isn't. Uh, is a candle body at support or above an exponential moving average or trend line? Well, let's turn on our EMAs. Again, we look at the 21 and 50 EMA. Okay, so, well, guys, we almost had a rocket yesterday on that, uh, on the EMAs, but this is a very bullish pattern. I'm, I'm gonna, because we're back above, the 21 and 50 day EMAs, which are now above each other. The 21 day was below the 50, came back up, rejected. This zone of uncertainty here is looking better and better. Okay, so let's go back to our checklist. 
Is it candle body at support and an EMA trend line? Yes. Is the price above the 21 and the 50 period EMA? Exponential moving averages? Yes. And as of yesterday, that was true. So I think that, again, even though it was a fake rumor, the, the test, what it shows is that when the Bitcoin ETF is approved, it's going to rocket higher. And people are just saying, I'm, I'm keeping my money in. I bought yesterday, but I'm not selling. That's what that means. Is the price above a rising support trend line? Let's take a look. Okay. Well, there is, you know, what do we have here? Higher lows. So really what we should have also drawn here is a is a, a symmetrical wedge that's now breaking to the upside. Okay, so we're leaning pretty bullish here. And it's the first time we really identified that breakout. Is price above? Yes, we said it is. Is price breaking above trend line resistance? Also, yes. See this example? That would have been yesterday's candle, right? Right there. Textbook example. So let's, uh, let me turn off the, what I want to do here, this little circle here that, um, it's getting a bit busy. I'll turn off the ERIs here because we've already covered that. And um, okay, I've got two of these. That's why. All right. So there we go. Um, well, let's keep going. We've got a nine out of 19 score, you guys. This is a, looking like a very strong trade for Bitcoin. And uh, to start getting into this, and we'll look at some other alts and things. Now is the volatility index above the 20 level. All right. The vol index, we don't normally and don't always use on the daily time frame because it's rare that the volatility gets that low, but it is still worth noting because when it does and starts coming out of that region, and again, this is one of ours, so you'll you'll have to, you can get access to these at cryptomastery.org and find out now that you, could, you can sign up for a year or you can sign up for six months and get a month free. If you sign up for a year, you get two months free. So go ahead and check that out. But um Lots of testimonials here, and uh, we use this in all of our higher-end programs. So anyway, uh, let's jump back over to this. So basically, the vol index is this one down here. And basically, so that is when the volatility is so oversold and it comes into the red zone, it's oversold to the point of, why are the labels not turned on to this and that? Okay. Uh, volatility index. Uh, I can turn the labels on and off. I don't know that we need to do that, but uh, let's see labels on the price scale. Why are they not showing up here? Visibility, volatility index. Um, I'll have to check on that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> when it comes out of the lower area in the red zone, comes back up, that's very bullish. Same down here. You can see some fake outs, but the lower it, it is when it comes out of this, the more bullish it is. So we go back to June of 2023. That was a great confirmation signal. This was bottoming. And then again, we see we came down in this range. Sorry, I butterfingered that. And we caught the vol index here right before that uh, pushed higher there. And, um, you know, so we, we are bouncing. We're not quite oversold. The times to be cautious are as when it's overbought and starts coming down. And we can draw, we can gain clues from this on the slope of the upper side of the ball index, by the way. See that? And you can look for bullish and bearish divergences. So at any rate, um, that would be one other one to keep in mind. But... Right now, it, it, all signals are go. I mean, regardless of what uh, we see there, actually, I mean, when I say regardless, regardless of the uncertainty in these patterns, our indicators are saying that we should go higher here. Let's take a look at the weekly because weekly is important also. Uh, we're also bullish on the weekly. So if I turn on the uh, ERI here, we had that ERI a couple of weeks ago. We had the TSI confirm in last week. And so this this would indicate we've got a few more weeks of upside. That's what I'm seeing here. So mark my words, I think we go higher. Now, anything can happen, but the signals that, this is why we rely on the signals. It takes the emotions out. You know, we have that wedge. We're breaking up about of the wedge. It'd be interesting to see how the weekly candle closes. Now, it'll be even better if we are, see our signal line turn green, but we're just about to see that. Weekly time frame is very important. And uh, where our signals really shine, uh, by the way, are on the longer term signs, uh, signs signals as well so this is a monthly chart of bitcoin 
if uh, let me clean this up a bit. And actually, if you're new here, just just zooming all the way out. And this is one of the rare cases. I'll watch the four Bollinger Bands on the monthly chart. But just zooming out, the ERI is only triggered four times on a monthly time frame. And those were all at the market bottoms. We had this in 2012. Again, it follows the footsteps of elephants in the smart money. Boom, right here in uh, January of 2012, just after the low of the market. So boom, and then we shot all the way up higher, getting pulled back in the bear market of you know 2015, caught the bottom here, you know, relative bottom. There's this zone, but I mean, that obviously was a great time to be buying. And then again, we saw the ERI on March of 2019 and pushed up higher, had the COVID kind of pullback. So that was a bit of an anomaly, but still these arrows represent the best times to buy. And sure enough, we saw it triggering here back in January. And I was telling people, hey, look, we've got the ERI. It's time to get into these markets. And then we pushed up 100%. So what we're seeing now is, and I've had this arrow drawn for some time as two likely scenarios. At this point, this first arrow looks like the more likely scenario. And again, once we break above 32K, I think we come back and retest and then push higher up to 49K. 48k to 50k that's that golden pocket fibonacci uh, retracement but you can see how how powerful and effective these indicators are when those two align so let me take these off here and show that uh so this is the tsi in the monthly chart so right in here in march of 2023 we confirmed and that was a bit late on on the overall scheme of things but in in the initial push but it was still going to be, I think, proven right because we were pushing higher. So the ERI and then in the as soon as this turned green, though, it really was a good confirmation signal on that longer time frame. And uh, so anyway, hopefully that helps. Uh, these have been invaluable for what we have been doing here at uh, Moonstream. Uh, now, the, here's this other scenario as well on the bull side is a, a bull flag. So on the bullish side, and we should add this to our other chart. Monthly MACD is, is looking pretty strong here, you guys. So I'm liking what I'm seeing, but we still have to see how the weekly monthly chart pan out. Uh, the bull flag, if this is the flagpole and this is the flag, if we start breaking up here, which we are, then the measured move on this on a monthly time frame, 195,000. So, you know, that's a bit early to be projecting, but... Also, we know on our Fibonacci's that the projection there from the market cycle high to the market cycle low of the last cycle, that is one of my projections here. So this is in alignment exactly. Look at that, everybody. I might have to do a trading view on that a video because that is, uh, it's, it's almost exact. The bull flag measured move up to 200,000 Bitcoin in the next cycle. So we'll have to see, but you heard it here first. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. I'm going to take a picture of that because, you know, when you start seeing confluence of things, these are the things you, you hate to look at later and be like, how did I miss that? And uh, I don't know. That's, I would certainly, I think a lot of people would like to see that. And that is, could be fueled by the BlackRock. Uh, ETF, because if BlackRock gets ETF, so will probably ARK Invest, uh, GBTC, Grayscale. You know, they're due to have, actually, there's a, there should be a ruling today. And maybe that's what that rumor, why they floated it when they did, because uh, there's one of these that was supposed to be decided on today. Not likely, I think, uh, you know, more likely January, we see one of these approved. So anyway, uh, any questions here? And uh Thank you, Jay. Amazing class. Uh, running a little bit long. Let's see, can the bell? So we'll kind of wrap things up. I want to look at some hot movers. We have found some interesting coins in, by doing that the last couple of weeks. Can the bell go away on the trend indicator as the day goes on? Yes, David. Good question. Need to wait for it on a closing basis as well. Yeah, excellent. Uh, the um, I'm just sorry, sorry, guys. Sometimes I find charts that I've made weeks ago and drawn these arrows and the prices are just following it exactly i mean that's that's how why you guys started calling me crypto damas back in the day and so um anyway look at this look at this arrow so that's another bullish scenario really tough really tough to call this one but uh we're we'll, we'll know soon enough 
and uh, this measured move break was, I'm going to take that off because that's when I thought there was the head and shoulders were way back here, not up here. So let's get rid of that scenario. Hey, new information equals new inf new decisions. So that's um, why well, I'm taking that off there. So your question, uh, can the bell go away? Yes. Yeah, so on the trend indicator, let's open this up. As with any of these, they're based on the current, you know, they will appear based on current candle pricing, but they can and will go away if price reverses. So let's say on this weekly chart, if we just took, have a huge sell-off and we close back down below this line, which is still possible. That's why this is kind of a tricky call. We need to be careful. Uh, and that would be a very bearish to have that huge topping tail, but it's feeling more bullish to me based on what we covered. But to your point, if we saw that, then we would see these signals kind of turn around and change. I know you were asking on specifically this. So could that bell go away? Absolutely. If we sell off hard today. So that's why you always want to wait. I'd at least wait till like around closer to the candle close around five Eastern. The candle close is, uh, it's either seven or eight Eastern, depending on your day daylight saving time. And that's uh, the, the variable, but um, you know, uh, it's it, the the activity. The Asian market opens up around five. I think it's Hong Kong, uh, different market makers. But sometimes they'll sell off end of day. But if it's like five, six, seven, eight o'clock, and it's still there, it's a valid call. And so you know, I think um, based on that and has that as our bellwether. Let's take a look. It's at Ethereum. Uh, I do. I did want to point out on uh, the one hour, four hour, how interesting these uh, order block. Uh, charts are that uh, show it came right up in here. It hit a, hit an order block, sell order block, and sold off on the four hours. So ETH looking not as strong as Bitcoin. Also on the ERI, we have an early reversal indicator and uh, that in this red. So these do work on multiple time frames, four hour, and then coupled with the TSI here, these two together highly likely to roll over Ethereum, uh, likely heading over on the four hour. But that's a shorter. Time frame, obviously, let's look at it on the uh, daily. But uh, yeah, ETH clearly looking weaker. Uh, it's, uh, you know, glad to see it pushed up. It's back to support in this region, but it's still below its 21 and 50 day EMAs and it's in a downward trending channel. So uh, what else can we see here? Now, the TSI is starting to turn higher, which is is bullish, though, on the daily basis on Ethereum. So again, we, you know, these signals are like our being a helicopter pilot and being instrument rated. You know, we... Uh, we're not worried about the wind and the other things necessarily. We're waiting on listening to what our instruments tell us. But right now it's just a TSI. So that's not enough. So whereas, just to jump back to our uh, checklist, whereas, oops, the checklist there, where did that thing go? Uh, over here. On, the, on Bitcoin though, we've got a very high 9 out of 19 bullish score. So highly, uh, and then the vol index. So it's a 10 out of 19. Make sure I had that right. Uh, we'd already taken it off. But uh, essentially, um, that is uh, what we would be watching for. Anything over a four or five score, though, is is in buy zone. And always use a stop loss. But this on Bitcoin, we've got a very high rating on this as an entry. Now, we do have some more advanced setups here, like the rocket. There wasn't a rocket candle, so that's not checked. Uh, there's some other more advanced uh, setups we won't go into today. But um, anyway, if you haven't already, definitely go and get your success trading checklist. And you can get that over at our website, moonstream.com. And click on the uh, link for this success trader success checklist. By the way, since we're here, uh, I do want to just talk about, okay, we need to fix that link. I guess, Myrene, it just opened the graphic for the Future of Crypto Summit. And uh, so if you could handle that, please. But let's see, back to our website here. That's not it. All right, one more time, Moonstream. So scroll down below this here. If you click on click for more information, uh, the image should load that page, but click here for more information or you can go to futureofcryptosummit.com and uh, learn more. Please do register for this. So it's a free summit. We've got a great lineup here for you guys. Everyone should be registering for this. And some great interviews you do with Max Wright. Many of you know him. I do a regular update, market update on his channel. Uh, Dirk De Bruin, 
uh, Art of Buying the Dip. You can see the topics here. I've got uh, Ricardo Martinez talking about wallets, and keys, uh, Michael Hearn, our friends over there at Uncensored Crypto, the hidden agenda behind central bank digital currencies. So uh, we've got Katie, the Russian, talking about dual citizenship secrets. That's how she goes by. Uh, then uh, running a Bitcoin node. There's all these topics you can learn about on the future of CryptoSummit.com. Mark Yusko, of course, great interview with Mark. And I uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, there's one on crypto regulation by Justin Newton. Juan Villaverde, also a regular contributor to Max Wright's channel. He talks about market cycles. Very interesting. I've, I've met and talked with Juan at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, he's a very smart guy. And uh, he also looks at cycles in terms of days only, not even price, but when markets should turn. He's also thinking November. Uh, and so you'll find out more in the interview I did with him. Uh, Scott Phillips uh, is a, an irreverent uh, Aussie trader trading out of Thailand. He's got some really information about trading bots. And uh, this is an R-rated interview because um, uh, the Aussies have a mouth of truck drivers at most times, but hey, they get away with it because of the accent. Uh, Joel, Coach K, we've had him on a few times. A smart guy, great trader, talking about market direction uh, changes before they happen. Uh, Lark Davis, popular YouTube uh, investor out of um, uh, New Zealand. So uh, it's just, it goes on and on. Of course, Mike Newton, we do a session. I interview Mike on wallet hacking. Uh, Hynek Gina, he's with Trezor, I believe. Mike interviews him on buying and selling with Bitcoin, where that's going, when that's happening. The explosion in crypto gaming by Tim Juice. The gaming is a huge new industry, emerging, emerging market. Eric Wade from, I believe, uh, Stansbury Research. Yes, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Leaving a legacy through intelligent crypto investing, talking about really how to ensure that if you got hit by a bus, your loved ones will not have to cry because your crypto has gone forever. It talks about how to make sure that you're leaving that to your family. Uh, we've got great uh, interviews with Mark uh, Goldman there, spotting pump and dumps. I do a session on protecting tr your trades from catastrophic losses. And it goes on and on and on here, you guys. Uh, we've got some Bl Byron from Blockworks. And Yuri Catalo, does a, he's for beginners, he's got a session on blockchain for grandma, for people who are new. Merrick Theobald, the, the vice president of marketing at BitPay. And um, funny story there about how I bought my first Bitcoin for $20 from their founder uh, who uh, was speaking and raising money back in 2013. And, uh, and on the condition that I spent that Bitcoin to buy drinks and appetizers with him in an Orlando uh restaurant there which was very early accepting bitcoin back in 2013 and then uh demelza hayes uh, she was the uh, chief economist at coin telegraph great interview about actually actively trading your crypto and being tax-free through an ira through your auth ira and and also a popular crypto exchange so whereas you might be on a on another platform for your IRA, like I trust, you really don't want to be actively trading there. It's not designed for that. And this is a way to just do all of your trades through this uh, very interesting interview. So make sure you sign up there. Future of Crypto Summit starts October 26th, goes for the 28th. Three days of interviews, all three, uh, all free. And uh, so register here. Okay, so uh, with that out of the way, let's go back to Ethereum. And uh, I've already covered that. I'm going to go over to... Crypto Mastery list, just touch on some things that have been moving in the last couple of weeks. Solana is actually looking really good here. And uh, by the way, our new ERI Pro, our Pro version of the early reversal indicator, we've now added order flow. So this is a very strong telltale sign that prices are going higher. Solana does look good here. Uh, we can see where these buy blocks have happened in the past, have preceded big market moves. These are these green boxes. Okay, so here that just shows money flow. And when we layer it in, in fact, I'm going to have to add that to the success trader worksheet. And uh, I'm going to do that right now because this is an excellent example of that order block that uh, will be turning on for existing users. So if you do sign up for Crypto Mastery, you will get access to that as well. All right, uh, so what we have here is some great signals for we're hitting across the board really we've got let me just zoom in on this you guys we have on solana we have a bullish eri we also have ascending eris this is one of our advanced setups eri here here and here and uh, we have the trend strength indicator confirming by going green 
and turning higher there. We have a signal line now going green. And uh, we have a key and a directional change, potential directional change. So we'd want to wait for the bell ideally, but to me, this looks like a very bullish setup. We're above the 21 day and 50 day exponential moving averages and pushing up into this uh, zone, which used to be a resistance zone. So we'll have to see kind of where things pan out. But let's take a look at the weekly as well with these indicators and see if they show us anything else. Looks also very bullish on the weekly. We've got the ERI back here, the trend strength indicator, which I'll zoom in. Again, the TSI going green, pushing higher there. We have a signal line pushing higher and then a key in the bell we're in. I think we have a few more weeks of upside with Solana based on our indicators. And uh, there you go. My buy trigger is up above this resistance level just to uh, de-risk this entirely. But uh, and above the 50 week exponential moving average. But uh, if you wanted to get in early, uh, signals look like we'll at least push up to those levels. So there you have it. That's how we run and read these. So we were watching Rune. Uh, the Rune not looking good, but our trend strength indicator rolling over. So that's an early indication. Had a great little run up in this range. So we'd want to wait for another turn up higher of the signals. Let's look at, jump back to the daily. But yeah, the Rune, Rune looking like it's ready to sell off below the 21 and 50 day EMAs. So uh, not looking so good there. Markets are mostly down across the board, except for Bitcoin and some of these other ones that, uh, well, a couple of these other ones. We, we've been watching INJ, still looks pretty solid. Let's take a look at the weekly and in an uptrend on the 21 day exponential moving average based on the Fibonacci, my targets were at least up here to the golden pocket, but even up higher has, uh, has, has some great potential uh, for uh, going higher. Uh, INJ. So just uh, keep an eye on that one. And so Polygon here, mm, bearish ERI. So that would sort of invalidate any entry, even though the TSI looking interesting, I'd wait. So again, the ERI can be used as an invid invalidation point. What I would suggest here is have an alert above the 50 day moving average, maybe even wait till Polygon gets back above the support levels. It does have some good news recently. So I'm going to set my alert there and as a sort of a possible buy. So I'll just put buy question mark. That means possible buy for me and hit create there. So, all right, anything else? And if anything you guys want to look at, um, Pirate J says, would it be worth, uh, would it be due? Would it be worth due? A little clumsy there. Would it be due to Bitcoin dominance? I guess is what you mean. To sell out of some alts. Yeah, I see. Jay, I do uh, and sell out and get back into alts. Yeah, I understand. Let's look at that in a minute. Um, okay, XRP below the 21 and 50 day. Our signals bearish ERI. XRP, no. Um, Filecoin I like for many reasons. Um, and to time this better... I'd wait for another bullish ERI, but this is uh, has been, yeah. Well, those of you know, this is one of our long, this is one of our picks. So basically this is slowly putting in higher lows. I would say above the 50 day moving average is great for Filecoin, but uh, another clue for this, and maybe we'll just say above 3.5. So that would be, you know, DCA buying more of that. That's just a note to myself, not selling you to buy or sell. Uh, but, uh, you know, what I'd wait for ideally is another early reversal indicator and the trend strength indicator, though, oversold, looking to peak back above. Now, you can set alerts on these indicators, by the way. So I'm going to hit add alert on the TSI. I want to know when it is. Now, my criteria is I want to say when it crosses up the 20 line. OK, so that tells me that when the TSI goes up and now you can also do it on the bar close. Okay. So I'll say bar close. That's a little bit of a nuance that tells me that it's only going to trigger if it's above the 20 line at the bar close. Do you guys understand? Um, so that's important. You can also do once per bar. Okay. So if it triggers at midday, it will only trigger that one time the alert. Uh, if you say only once, you know, it'll only do that one time forever. But uh, and then once per minute. OK, so that's for day trading, stuff like that. But once per bar close is one to keep in mind when using these on the indicators, because that way, you know, as we just talked about, it would confirm that it's a valid signal. Everyone get that? 
All right. So I'll tell you what, uh, I don't see, I see a sea of red here. Let's do this. I want to just jump over because we do this every week and uh, we look at the, let's see, just let me close some windows here. We look at the list of gainers. So we've got some of the, we've, we found some good gems here now. Uh, Vibrate, I'm not familiar with. It's a market cap of 16 million. So it's kind of small. We can pull it up and see. Okay, look on the super charts. That's these regular charts here. Okay, well, th this has clearly uh, been pumped on very low volume. You don't want to, I don't recommend touching these things. There's all, There's no volume showing up. And clearly that's a pump and dump. And so again, that Bollinger Band is uh, what you want to go by. And by the way, I'm going to save my settings as default because I like that thicker line on the Bollinger Band. Uh, all righty. And then the average true range. We haven't talked about that actually. And I neglected to do that on Bitcoin. Let me come back in here real quick and uh, show you the average true range and see if it shows us anything because... Yeah, so that's another one of our signals. It's also showing us bullish signs here on the daily chart of Bitcoin. And so when this starts, when it changes from entry, from exit to entry, we can can be the beginning of a longer term trend. So you don't want to you want to have that on our favor uh, as well. Okay, so essentially we want to have and uh, make sure I need to make sure that's in the checklist. So there, I've got two new ones to add to the checklist. And we're always expanding on that. Okay, so jumping back though to that chart, let's see, we've got our Bitcoin monthlies, we've got our top gainers. So this uh, vibrate, no idea what they do. Um, stay away from things like this uh, unless it comes back in with the Bollinger Band. But you know, the there might be some news on this. I don't know. And I, I just tend not to want to play around with these. So let's take a look at uh, now. Loom had a big run. Here's a good signal to get out of Loom. Bearish TSI, this red bot, red chevron there, signaling it's going to go lower. By the way, if you do when you sign up, you can change these. I believe the defaults are circles. I'm not sure. Maybe we change that, but you can change the yes these to the label down. That's what I like to use on mine. And uh, or you can use, you know, arrow down, you can do whichever you want, but there's just have to change those in here so they're consistent. So I'm going to take Loom off of our, our list here. Actually, let's keep it on the list. Okay, and there, uh, and I'll keep it on my list too. So I don't know, we'll, we'll keep an eye on Loom. The, the, this thing could run again. It's It's up into new high territory, which means it's in price discovery zone. And what I would suggest is, is watch it for another cycle down and another bullish ERI. Uh, I'll just set an alert here up there to approximate the next push higher. But you can see how very quickly you can set alerts on these charts and uh, keep these uh, in mind. So, uh, but uh, yeah, loom down 25%. Well, that was that had a huge monumental rise up. Had This was recommended by a few newsletters. So it went up 761%. So that was a 7X in a couple of weeks, a couple of months there. A couple of weeks, I'm sorry, but anyway, um, we'll take it. We'll we'll pull that down. Uh, let's see. I'll close this and come back to that. We'll come back to this. So you can come in and see. Uh, let's see. ORBS things that are up 20, 30, 80 percent likely are going to be pump and dumps like this Harry Potter Obama Sonic. I don't. I, I I'm afraid to even. I don't even want to look at this, but we'll do it. But. Uh, for God's sakes, don't be buying into these things unless you know you have some inside intel or you really know what you're doing. Um, I mean, just purely from the, you know, but but here, this, this does show the indicators. If you were watching Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic 101 Eno or 10 Enu, <laughs> the early reversal indicator triggered here bullish engulfing candle right there we had our green box uh this shot higher another bullish engulfing candle had the tsi also go green we have a signal line going green uh just showing you that our our indicators do work do work very well on all time frames and all signals all coins so um i i'm not going this is a micro cap uh, i'm not going to give any buy recommendations but uh this is something that 
potentially could be a pump for another few days. It It is showing a rocket signal, you guys. So this is one of our favorite indicators we talk about in our M3 trader and describe what that means. But it is sitting, the rocket on the launch pad is forming on this on this uh, coin. Where is it even available? Uh, let's see. Well, what's the deal? It's showing up as Bitcoin. So, uh, let's see it here. It is BitGet, CoinX, Uniswap may be the only place if you wanted to try that. Uh, and uh, excuse me one second, you guys. I have been expecting a call, so I hate to do this, but um, one second. Yeah, it was a spammer. Don't you love these spam calls? I have I have that sort of important timely call that I had to answer that. Won't do that again. All right, so here we go. We are a little bit over time, you guys. And um, so keep that in mind. I guess you could, I would look at, you can use these indicators to find good opportunities from this list, which is, you can Google it. It is the TradingView price gainers, okay? And so I'll just skim through these to see if any of you jump out. Stormax, we had on our list and uh, I'll pull that up as well as our last coin. And then if you guys have any last questions, uh, please let me know. And be sure to go get your success trader checklist. And uh, Myrene, I'm going to have some updates for this based on some screenshots from today that uh, we will play around with and get to you guys. So uh, what's going on here? Stormax, right? So let me turn off the uh, ATR. And this is another a low volume project that uh, is not even showing up here. But you know these that are that have these topping tails, you want to be careful of. That being said, our indicators do work. We have a nice bullish engulfing candle. TSI is heading lower, so you know um, not a recommendation, just a recommendation. However, to make sure you're using these indicators in these markets and being ready for the next phase. And uh, if you'd like more in depth analysis, you want to join us through for our M3 Active Trader class that we teach. And uh, I teach every Wednesday that you can find that at moonstream.io. And right here for this more information on Moonstream M3 Active Trader. Uh, there's also some of our other services like our Retire Rich, talking about emerging markets. And again, make sure to sign up for the Future of Crypto Summit. That's free. Uh, M3 Crypto, you can learn more about. Okay, that link is broken. Awesome. Um, Irene, if you could jump on that too, we have a broken link on this page, but uh, all you have to do is actually go to moonstream.io M3. There we go. And you can learn more about this right here. And the weekly classes, you get daily access to me in a chat. Many of you, you can also attend these classes live. Many of you are watching this on the YouTube replay, but you can attend these classes live, get your questions answered. There's a membership area. You get lots of stuff, even cheat sheets that I shared some of with, with you today, the trading patterns of candle, high probability candlestick patterns, a DCA investing worksheet, portfolio tracker, but really I'm giving daily uh, updates in there and you get the indicators included in that program. So there you have it. And don't forget to buy Bitcoin, Jerome Powell says. <laughs> Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, let me check the chat real quick. Uh, adding the three BB to the checklist, Sam. That's a good idea. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Um, I do need. So, Pirate J talked about Bitcoin dominance. Let's take a look at that real quick. So, uh, come down to BTC.D. That's really a question for tomorrow's class, Jay. But um, let me touch on it, and I'll do that for you. So I'll turn off these things. Oh, we if we haven't didn't have our radar on. Radar is all green on uh, Bitcoin dominance here. What is it saying for Bitcoin? Mostly green on the charts for Bitcoin. So that's interesting. Let's go back to Bitcoin dominance and take a look at that. It pushed, you know, previously it pushed right up to that fifty-two percent level, which I was expecting it would, and, and we are pushing up higher. So money is flowing out of alts into Bitcoin. Because people realize, hey, the, the big winner is going to be Bitcoin when the ETF is approved. So 
and you're exactly right when once that starts to run out and bitcoin dominance starts to fall that's only going to be because money's flowing out of bitcoin and back into the alts that's where we get this super alt season that includes ethereum so generally it'll go into eth first and then uh, into the other altcoins so back in 2021 you know when we first started to see that market take off bitcoin dominance led and then people started taking profits out of bitcoin and putting it into ETH and the other alts. So prices were continuing to go higher here, obviously, but Bitcoin dominance was falling. So we could see a massive surge in Bitcoin dominance going into this last quarter and into the BlackRock and the other ETF announcements, which are mostly considered as a done deal, just a matter of time. Although I will say this, and I'll leave you with this, be careful and be very uh, risk aware of consensus. Consensus is dangerous. And as we know that nothing is ever as it seems in crypto. So that's why we follow the charts. We follow the indicators because they will tell us what the smart money is doing. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, you guys, I think that was a good class as well. And uh, Sam, I'll uh, take a screenshot of that for us too. I think that's a good idea. All right, everybody, take care, everyone. And be sure and like. The, if you're watching on the replay, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like this to keep doing these. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye, everyone.